Well, g'day folks. I never know how to start these videos actually. Like, where do you put your hands as well? Well, hello there. Anyway, today I'm reviewing a tripod, but it's a photo tripod from KNF. Now, I'm a videographer normally, so this review is gonna be full of user error. But then again, that's the whole point. What would a videographer do with a photo tripod? Can we use it? Can I use it in weddings? And in fact, I actually have taken this to a wedding and it did all right, I gotta say, but more on that later. Would I start taking photos? Maybe. I actually have done, I've taken it around Sydney and I've tried to do some cool time-lapse. It's kind of reawakened some new passion for photography. But initially when I received the tripod, I wasn't thinking that, like this bad boy here. And in fact, let's open it up, shall we? It comes in this cool bag. So when I initially got this, I thought just how crazy light it is. And being a videographer, I don't know if you guys will relate to this, but we want to carry as much as we possibly can to get the best shots possible before it starts being, you know, unwieldy. So you get diminishing returns, I guess you could say. So even if you have three cameras set up and you've done the ceremony, apart from getting in the way, the photographer but that's a whole nother story you kind of shoot yourself in the foot because you might get one thing done and dusted in the bag but then quite often what happens at weddings is um, they'll say look we've got 10 minutes to do a photo shoot and you're gonna spend a large percentage of that packing up your gear yeah but once again the first thing I noticed about this is just how light it is and what we'll do is we'll just set it up and then I'll take some more shots of it. I've done some wicked time lapse on the S1H. Well, not yet. I actually used the S&Q on my A7 III first and then discovered the S1H, but we'll add that to the video. I'd like to keep this going because what I want to do is explain, we'll just let you know in real time how quick it takes to set up. And the first thing of note is I really love the spinning locks. Much, much better, in my opinion, than the quick release locks because over time that actually becomes loose and it's really annoying and it'll catch you out. You'll be in the middle of a wedding and you'll pop something heavy on there with like a monitor as well and it starts to slip. In its defense, uh, this has been really good with quick setup and quick deployment. Um, it's much quicker to go like that, snap it down, than to spin a wheel, of course. But I was gonna say more on that later, but no, we'll cover that now. What you wanna do is guess the height of your tripod beforehand within a certain range. And I won't touch the legs again. I'll touch the center column. So yeah, the center column is where we're going to focus on quick deployment, at least for me in weddings anyway. So the reason I bring that up is, I guess that makes the quick release catch as a bit of a non-issue, if you judge that distance right. So back to the K and F. So we have my favorite spinning locks. And you gotta be careful when you do this, it took me a while to get used to it. Because what you can do, and this is pretty much my only gripe with this, is this one of the legs actually spins off and becomes, is it that one? No, it's this one. That actually spins off and becomes a monopod. And I don't want that spinning off when I'm, you know, in the heat of the moment when you're on a job. But I figured if I hold that and then spin there, it becomes free. Which will lead us to our next point. Once you spin all these bad boys down, look how tall this is. Maybe if I'm doing a wedding with basketballers, Look at that, which is excellent. It's good to know that when I do get the basketballer wedding, I've got a tripod for it. And I may be repeating myself today, but forgive me for that. I did take it already to a wedding. We can show a shot of that. And the reason why I really want it to do well in weddings is once again, it's just so light. If I was doing a destination wedding, this guy is definitely coming. 
without a doubt. So once again, back to this quick deployment. I'd actually leave the legs, I would judge roughly how tall they are, and then during ceremonies, use that central column to fine tune it. And if I need to, if someone stands up and gets in my way, can pop that up. All right, let's all laugh at the videographer trying to figure out the photo tripod, shall we? So I've popped the Arca Swiss plate on there already. And you just spin that shut. And as a regular tripod, I feel safe about that. That's pretty good. But there's some fancy features to this KNF tripod. So because I'm a bit funny like that, let's do all the testing without the camera on there, hey? Okay, there's the center column. That's beautiful. We've already covered that. Now, it's got a special other feature. On this ball head here, you can loosen it, and that actually extends as well. So that means it can go even taller than what I first showed. That's, that's crazy. So, if I made this even taller, and put that in place, what the hell? I am, can you see that? You can't even see it. Let's move it back. Oh man, I wasn't kidding about the basketball. Volleyball players and basketball players Wedding tripod, there you go. There's some advertising for you. So I'm six foot, and look at that. Look at that, I adjust the camera, you know? Whoa, I adjust it. That's crazy. Concert camera. But what I think you're supposed to do with this one is pull it out like that, and then it actually becomes a lateral bar. So I guess if you don't have an L plate on your camera, you can do vertical shooting. Just make sure that lateral crossbar is in line with one of the legs of the tripod. And we'll do that using the little pan head here. By the way, that pan head is very smooth. I'll show you a test of that. I was actually very surprised. Both of these are quite smooth, these pan heads. So that'll get us over balconies. And do you know what else this is good for? The tripod legs itself stop you from getting near the window. So you would set your tripod up on, I guess on this thing and then you'd push this towards the window. And then you can add like a black hood over it so there's no reflections. Yeah, so I would use that for windows, we'll say. And leaning over balconies to dangle your very expensive camera because you'll have four of them in your bag anyway, right? And lastly, yeah, with the double ball head system, you could go portrait, landscape, or vertical and horizontal for us normal people. Uh, good for social media, yeah? Put your phone on there if you want. All right, will I trust that with my heavy as S1H? Let's give it a go. Now I'm trying to make this as fast as possible because I'm aware it'll be too long otherwise. And there's a baseball game about to happen, so we'll, we will be fast. Right, so you'd have to lock the hell out of it to make sure it doesn't spin. So firstly we'll lock the crossbar. And then this pan head will move under a bit of tension, so we'll lock that as well. And the last thing is the ball head. And I might just use the camera's own leveler, actually. Or oh, do we have a leveler on there? We do. We've got a spirit level. Yay! Let's use that. Alright. You can see the little bubble in the middle. Tighten the bejesus out of it, because I ain't dropping my S1H. That's enough about the center column. Oof. Okay. All right, sorry KNF. Even though that felt quite stable, it still freaked me out a bit, being a video shooter with my expensive S1H camera. You know what? It's taking the heavy S1H and 24105 just fine. So I think I can stop being a pussy about it. Just make sure once again that uh, you've got the crossbar in line with one of the tripod legs. And also it does recommend not going past the stop line. And I don't need any 
um, reminders about that with my expensive gear. So it is quite sturdy. Look at that, and it's even got some more, more to give. And I'll write down the payload in the specs below. Okay, so now we're in a bit more stable land. How are we going? We're still recording? Okay, good. Let's switch to video. What I was very impressed with was this pan head. Now, check out how smooth this is. I was surprised. It's not as smooth as my fluid head, of course, but if you're just really careful with it, call it DJ hands. DJ's on the wheels of steel. Like, that's all right. There was a bit of an initial catch there. So maybe before I got to the important meat and potatoes of the shot, I'd give it a little bit of headway and then come from the center here and then I would pan. Like in a pinch. Like I said, if you were traveling and you're allowed to have seven kilos only, you want to use that all for your cameras and your gimbals and your drones and you don't have any room left for tripods, then this is definitely the go. I'll show you one more time, let's do it again so it's not a fluke. And I'm even going to do it left-handed. Fwaaah! So in a pinch, you can use this as video, if this is your only tripod you have. I'm quite happy with that, I would do my destination weddings with this little guy. So as a video tripod, it's actually very, very usable. And like I said, I've actually taken this to a wedding and I used it as my tripod for the second camera. And knowing full well that I won't have the quick features that I'm used to on the Manfrotto to adjust fluidly and adjust my shot, knowing full well I needed to set my shot up and kind of leave it, in that respect, it was perfect. And what came in really handy was that center column. By being able to lift that up to its maximum height, I'm able to lower the legs and therefore make a smaller footprint uh, so it fit between the pews. And not only that, I had to adjust one of the legs anyway to fit up on top of the stage. So I was happy with that. Um, I think that's just about it. What else was there? Oh, and I almost forgot about this. You can do underslung mode. So you spin that thing away, and you take it completely out, and put it this way for underslung. So it's good for low perspective shots and macro. I'm macro. Will it work on me? Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We might end this with some shots. We'll take it into the city. There's no excuses since it's so light. And so my closing thoughts are, yes, definitely. We'll use this for video, for traveling destination weddings. Let me just pack this up. And obviously for hiking photos. Be one of those people that you see lined up along the harbor. Or one of those awesome people who wake up at 3.30 in the morning and then travel somewhere near the beach and get a cool sunrise shot. And since I hate waking up early, you know, I could probably do that, just not sleep, just stay up. So maybe one day I won't sleep, big night of partying, and we'll watch the sunrise with this, with this thing. Yeah. Or we could go waterfall chasing. What do you reckon? But I definitely will be using this guy and I reckon that's just about it. I'll let you go, hey? Now I don't know how to say goodbye either. So I'll say, that'll do. That'll do, pig. See you later. <laughs>